Can we start by talking about Serbia's military posture on the border with Kosovo? The Americans have described it as unprecedented and having a destabilizing effect on that country. Now, certainly the Kosovans say it's destabilizing. That is your intention, is it not? It's just to get some figures. Let's say a year ago, we used to have 14,000 close to administrative line with Kosovo. Now we used to have 8.4 thousand, which is significantly... But you have moved more military, more artillery to the border. Yes, yes, true. yes. And uh, that's what uh, our military did without getting higher alert signed by myself. Why, because, why did you Because do they that? felt it was... Uh, difficult situation, an ongoing difficult situation in Kosovo, most probably. That's why they do it. That's why all the armies are doing in the world. But we had no intentions to attack anyone and we did not. Now we de-escalated the situation and tomorrow we'll have people from European Union and United States of America to go together with our people to see that now it's 4.4, something like that. But do you agree people. that it does have a destabilizing effect? I cannot agree that that had a destabilizing effect. I believe that uh, we need to go to the roots of a problem and nobody wants to do this. And I do understand your approach. It's always, it's always easy to criticize someone and it's always easy to label someone because if you have, I'm not speaking about you, but I'm speaking about an entire world that kind of uh, superficial approach, which is we have good and bad guys, and if these guys are mounting up, uh, building up their army, then they, they are this destabilizing factor. It's not exactly like that. We need to discuss the real issues, and uh, nobody wanted to do so. And the, real the number issue, of troops has been reduced now. Yes, 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 yes. Now it's 4.4 on regular level. Okay. Can we just talk about the ambush on the 24th of September? Kosovan policeman was killed in that. According to the Kosovans, some 70, 80 uh, men, heavily equipped, heavily armed, took part in that. They claim that it was orchestrated by you and your government. What's your response to that? It's always easy to say that because who was going to believe in something opposite? Almost no one. But you, you deny it. Let me finish it. And uh, it was not actually even an ambush, if you realize what happened. But uh, the guy was killed by explosive that was connecting two trucks that they wanted to set as barricades. They started saying it was 20, then 30, now it's 60. But anyway, uh, I believe that nobody needed that, nobody needed that. Those people were mainly expelled from their thresholds, from their houses, and we, even we knew so that. So you, you have sympathy with these I men don't who speak, took, I took don't part say, in this, I, I, don't quite, I use their language, this ambush, no, you have I, sympathy with them? No, I don't have any sympathies. You it's condemn some, it? Of course I do condemn it. You cannot kill the guy, doesn't matter what does he do or uh, what was happening in North Kosovo. I strongly condemn that already, publicly. It's not allowed at all, you can't do it. But the real issue is, you speak about one police guy, then there were three Serbs killed. But in the meantime... The Kosovans call them terrorists. Would, would you call yeah, them terrorists? Uh, it's a different issue. You cannot call people that were living there and that wanted to go back to their thresholds, to their houses, Terrorists, but what I can say, but what I can say, what happened with those people that actually shot seven Serbs before that? There is no an ongoing investigation, and uh, including kids that were but, but that were shot. Me, forgive me, just, sounds, just if I may forgive, just finish it. Me, it sounds as though you are justifying their actions. I'm not justifying anything. I'm speaking about the roots of a problem. I'm speaking about the reason why some people wanted to do something anyway, it was bad. And I'm not justifying it. But, but you I'm understand saying, it. You understand why they took up arms. But I can understand, everybody can understand, because those people 
were mainly expelled from their thresholds. Many of them were shot by Kosovo police, even kids, 11 years old. And no one was held accountable for that. And there is no even an ongoing investigation about uh, shots uh, and uh, attempts of killing of uh, Dragiša Shagaljak, Serb from North Kosovo, Jovanović, Miljević, and all the others. People are gradually leaving North Kosovo. You need to understand what is happening. There is something as a wider picture. It's not that simple as it looks. Although, as I said, it's always the easiest way to approach it. In terms of the weaponry that was used, the Kosovans have made what some would say a quite compelling case. They've published photographs, uh, they've shown video images of the kind of weapons that were used, many of them heavy armaments that were manufactured here in Serbia. How do most you... of it manufactured in Serbia? Most of it, but most of how do you think those men got hold of but, those weapons? But because don't states normally have control of guns? I mean, their argument is that they were kind of provided with those weapons. But most of Kosovo police arms are, were manufactured in Serbia, and we didn't sell it to them. Those guys that were persecuting, that were chasing Serbs, and that belonged to Kosovo police. They were carrying AK produced, manufactured here in Kragujevac. And we didn't so, your argument them. is that they could No, have my, that's, in, not, that's, in, my, that's my response that it means that it doesn't mean a lot. But you need to know that it's easy for them to find it anywhere, not only on a black market, but everywhere. Because people, are, people will always be supportive to those people that would like to defend, because from our point of view, from the point of view of Serbian people, that's a part of Serbia, according to our constitution. That's a different angle that you need to take. That's why I'm saying it's not something that is allowed, not at all, but I'm telling you that it's not that difficult. And the guy that was actually asked in uh, that pre-trial procedure was saying that he was buying something in Serbia, something in Croatia, something in Bosnia. We'll check it out now. Milan Radojic. That's him, yeah. One of the people who he says he took part in it. He, he's, he's a close ally of yours, isn't he? Yeah, he... he I can say I... Describe as a friend? No, I cannot say that he was a... But he's an ally of yours. And here he is. No doubt he was a vice president of Srpskalista. He's an ally of yours, and yeah. he says that he took part in what the Kosovans have called an ambush. You, you disagree on that language. But it's certainly one of the most violent episodes that's happened in the country in years. He's arrested here in Serbia. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen to him now? He's indicted. Why don't you, bearing in mind... He's, he is indicted. Would you call what happened a crime? He is indicted. It was a big, huge criminal offence. It was a huge criminal offence. Yes. Why don't you hand him to the Kosovans? Are you kidding or what? Because we don't... I'm asking a question. No, but I'm asking you whether you're kidding because you know that we cannot extradite anyone to Pristina because we don't recognize Kosovo as a state. But this is How a very serious it? offense. It's an exceptional offense, perhaps make an exception. Yeah, it's a very serious offense. There has, there has been thousands of serious offenses and uh, although we are UN recognized state, they, are not, they did not extradite anyone to Belgrade. One of the easiest ways to um, make things better, I mean, you, 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 uh, Serbia, of course, wants to accede to the European Union, would be just to normalize relations with Kosovo. That's what we were... Why, why, don't, why don't you do that? I mean, that's in your gift. It's something that you could we were work doing, towards. We were, we were doing our best, really. We were very constructive. Even at the recent meetings in Brussels, we were accepting all the proposals from Borel and Lajcak. The other side didn't want to do anything on Association of Serbian Municipalities, which was signed 10 years ago, 11 years ago, and they just didn't want to move on this. What they have always been asking for is just recognition and nothing but that. And that's it. And they didn't want to deliver on ASM. Just not to forget, if there was full respect of Brussels agreement, there would have never been Kosovo Albanian police guy in the north. It should have been Serbian guy 
in Kosovo police uniform, according to the Article 9 of Brussels Agreement. So, so who, do you, regional who, police. who do you blame for what is happening at the moment? Do you blame the men who are picking up I believe, arms against the Kosovans? No, do, I, believe, who, who I, I believe that everything that was actually created in Kosovo was the fault of Albin Kurti. But I know that nobody would listen to this because but, but you do who also, cares? But you do also say two things. That what, what you say to the foreign media is very different to what you say to your own media. No, right? I exactly quote, the same. quote you okay, from please. what you, you, you said to Serbian TV yesterday. You blamed the so-called international community for allowing the continuation of terror in Kosovo. No. You then went on to use fairly no, inflammatory you. language, saying that if this continues, people will, and I quote, start packing things on trucks, tractors, and buses. Yeah. Of course, that will remind people of the conflict in, in, the, ni in the 90s. Yeah, in Croatia. But you blame the international community. No, 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 I said something else. Partly, yes, but I'm blaming myself. I was blaming myself, not them. I was saying, actually, that it was my fault that a year ago, when we got a statement, when we were negotiating removal of those barricades, of those roadblocks, I got all the guarantees from European Union and the United States of America. And they faced those people, Radojic and all the others. It was a public event. And they were very angry. They were very disappointed with my big plea to them to remove all those roadblocks and everything. But I said to them, we have nothing else to offer but to do this because they fulfilled everything we asked for. And what they fulfilled, they promised to Kosovo Serbs that they were not going to be persecuted and prosecuted by Albin Kurti's regime after they removed those roadblocks. And they said to me, but we don't believe you. Mr. Vucic, we have no guarantees. I said to them, I guarantee you. And I lied to them. Because this kind of expellation and prosecution of everybody that was participating in those barricades were continued. And that was the issue that I was speaking about, and which is true. Final 100 question. 100% true. Final question. Where does Russia fit into all of this? It's the uh, argument put forward by the Kosovan government that what's happening in their country is that with the instigation of Serbia, you're trying to destabilize. People will remember, of course, what happened with little green men going into Crimea in 2014 in the Donbass, and it's the playbook straight out of well, what the Kremlin does. What would, you, would, what would you say to that? It's easy to refute it. It's easy to be the story because I don't know who wanted to do this or another way who wanted to see that or what. But it's the real issue is that some people did secession of almost 14% of Serbian territory. It's not us that we, do, that we took anyone else's territory. It was the others that did it, which was not in adherence with UN Charter and UN Resolution 1244, which is still in effect. That's what I can say to you. These are the real issues. And nobody wants to see it. How we can do something like Crimea or Donbas, but you did it to us. You did it to us. With the same excuses as we heard a year and a half ago. And in the meantime, I didn't have, although before that I met uh, President Putin 19 or 20 times, after that I didn't speak to him and I didn't meet him unlike many European leaders. So relations are bad with Russia? I cannot say that they're bad, but uh, it's like... But you condemn what's happening in Ukraine? Yeah, no doubt. We do support territorial integrity of Ukraine and we'll always do it. For us, Crimea and Donbas are part of Ukraine and it will remain so.